The views and comments expressed on the following radio program by its hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect the views of rmconair.com or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Are we on? Hey, <laughs> what up? <laughs> we back. The first show of 2013. This is my first time getting a chance to say Happy New Year to every motherfucker. Happy New Year to all you motherfuckers. You made it. Zo. <laughs> yeah, happy New Year, big homie. <laughs> What's up, man? Zo back in the house. Uh, everybody else, we don't know where the fuck they at. Fuck them. Uh, <laughs> fuck them, really? <laughs> fuck them. You know I don't fucking. Come on, this is me. People fuck with me because I'm me. <laughs> fuck them. If you notice, Bobby ain't been back on the show. Me and Bobby had that little fallout that day. He was drunk and he tore up something in my car. What did he do? He tore up this thing on the car door. What? And then I said, man, Bobby, you tore this up. He was like, what? I didn't tear that up. <laughs> that's why I really, that's what really happened between that's why me he and gone. Bobby. I was like, how the fuck you gonna lie and act like you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about? And I didn't say he was gold. It's just I was mad to the motherfucker. So he... We 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 cool. How I y'all talking? I, I mean, I talked to somebody. But a lot of people buddy. fuck with Bobby in his old school perspective. I fuck with Bobby. Okay, but so at the same time, you can't be unaccountable for shit. You know, don't, I didn't break that. Don't play me. <laughs> I, I'll be your friend to the end until you. Would you play me? I'm like, hey, don't fuck up. Now. Stand on what you did. Has he acknowledged that he broke it? Yeah, he said he gonna pay for it, but we already know that's uh. <laughs> Come that's on, man! Like, how the fuck you gonna pay for this shit, Bobby? You know how much this shit costs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I know. Don't do him like that. Oh, I ain't mad at. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. I'm not mad at Bobby. I expect Bobby to be exactly who Bobby is. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I know how he is. He's one of those guys, and I'm sure everybody out there got friends like that that's Jekyll and Hyde when they drink. When Bobby get drunk, that motherfucker is annoyinger. Yeah. Is that a word? Annoyinger? Yeah, well, let's go with it. He's annoyinger. <laughs> that means he's already annoying, but more annoying <laughs> when he drinks. Annoyinger. That sounded like some alcohol I created. Well, what did he, what did he say to me? What did he say? Oh, yeah, that's right. He was about to get at your ass one day. That yeah, shit was, was like, funny I was hell. like, hey, nigga, check yourself. Bobby, an old country boy. I'm an old country boy, too. <laughs> I mean, From the same is. state. Like, hold up, Pimp. <laughs> <Right. laughs> hold tight, man. His um, The way he feels about things, he feels like that's more important than the way things should really be brought or said or whatever. Um and that's good a lot of times when you're dealing with a guy like me, but you know what I mean? That We're just giving the scoop on Bobby because people be asking me, where's Bobby? Wow. Well, he old. I respect he him, though. When's his, is his book out? Remember he said I don't know. When this book coming out? When is that? We, I, I'm looking for it. Real men don't play. Yeah. Real men don't play. I mean, I know he's been writing it, but you know, there's, they, they did an episode on Family Guy where the dog Brian was supposed to write his book and Stewie was laughing. So when's that book coming out? That book you've been talking about for years. When that book is coming out? You know? Oh, <laughs> damn. Come on now. Now, you, I don't know where the fuck Darlene at either. Darlene, she going through shit, though. Darlene is oh, well. in the transitional stage of her life. What happened? Uh, I don't know for sure. It Ice and Coco got back together. What happened? I don't know what happened with that. Ice, Coco. Um, <laughs> what is that shit women go through at a certain age where they... Um, Menopause? Go, yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> Maybe that's it. I don't know. Women go through shit. You know what I mean? So you saying she can't come do the show because she going through menopause? I don't know. I don't know where Darlene is, but you know, um, I love her to death. But I ain't even worried about that motherfucking shit. <laughs> A lot of people uh, enjoyed seeing her on the last show. Uh, She'll her. be back. Darlene will be back. Darlene mm -hmm. just going through her little shit right now. She'll be cool. She just got to find out. Yeah, 25 year old or somebody something just, like that whatever she gotta do she be alright right. shit Darlene been out here in LA making it on her own all this time I what are you what her. are you implying making what? it on her own making it on her own I mean ever since her and um <laughs> I'm just her and dude broke up Darlene been finding ways to get shit done like, I would imagine what, I mean, what, what kind of ways Corey you tell me I I mean, man look when you look at people 
you see, and you see them, you can tell if they maintain it, you know, somehow, some way. Right. Because this is a cold world out here in L.A., man. This shit is not easy out here in Los Angeles. This shit is not cheap. No. They need to have Hollywood and motherfucking Cleveland or somewhere. Where <laughs> get a nice apartment for $600 or something like that. Out here, $600, you are in danger. Right. If your rent is $600 out here, motherfucker, <laughs> you are in danger. You better uh, walk with that Bible in your head every day. <laughs> Anybody ask you anything, say, I'm here to represent God. That's the only thing keeping gangbangers off you sometimes. Man. Hey, have you have you seen uh, the Django movie? Yeah, I saw that bullshit. What? Okay. What did you like it? I mean what I are your mean, opinions? You know, it had some it had some funny parts in it, but it really was a um way Hollywood um gets a chance to um talk crazy and make black people look a certain way. Mm-hmm. You know, Quentin Tarantino has mastered the word nigger in his movies. That's the theme of his movies, nigger. That's the word. And black people, this is what I don't like when uh, people be like, black people say nigger too, but it's not the same. Why isn't it? When Caucasian people say nigger because they have power. Mm. That's just like somebody who ain't got ice cream saying, I want some ice cream. But somebody with ice cream saying, yeah, I want some too. You like, hey, that's some bullshit today. You got the shit. You know what I mean? Why are you asking for something you already got it? You already got the shit, right, man. Right, right, right. So that's what, I don't like when I hear... You said you were desensitized to it. They said it so much in the movie. They said niggas so many times. I just was like, okay, fuck it. We're just not going to worry about that part of the movie. Damn. Uh, Samuel Jackson was brilliant in his role as the greatest Uncle Tom ever on film. I've never yeah, seen nobody. Uh, yeah. He mastered Uncle Tom. Right. And I know black people like that for real. They yeah. hate black people, but really try to please white people. <sighs> and when he died, and when, the, when the white guy died in the movie, that motherfucker like, ran up. No! <laughs> that was the best part of the movie to me. I laughed at that. Right. I, I couldn't help it. Right. I know you know, uh, they made a character sort of like that on uh, that um, um, cartoon. Uh, the character name was Uncle Ruckus. Yeah, yeah. He was Uncle Ruckus, he for sure. He was Uncle Ruckus times five. And yeah. Everybody know how bad Uncle Ruckus is on right. that cartoon. Right, um, Boondocks. Boondocks, yeah. yeah. Um, this guy, Samuel Jackson's character, hated black people. Yeah. And let me let me ask you this. Of black men and women... Of the two genders, black men and women in America, who's closest to the Samuel Jackson character? Black men or black women? Black women. Why, why, why would you black, say such a thing? Well, black women have been trained to feel as though they are supposed to report <laughs> black men. <laughs> To the authority. 323-965-1600 if you agree or disagree with Corey Holcomb. Call right now and let's go deeper. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's like when calls come from domestic, domestic calls come into the police, um, a lot of times it is black women calling on black men and it doesn't have to be a fight. Just come get this motherfucker up out of here because I'm mad at him and I know I had a power to do this. But there are also times where... Black They're women. in real danger. Women are in danger. When a man loses control and he loses his temper, a woman is in danger. Yeah, it's probably a, uh, something that led up to all of that. But true, I'm, I'm not. I'm not taking up for the bad guys. There are some bad right men who are black. But I'm saying, in my opinion, black women have been given passes to do things that are immoral, and they take advantage of that pass. Mm. Like. For example, they'll be messing with a married man and get pregnant. And um, because the system wants chaos, they will allow a black woman to take money from that family, even though she was wrong in the beginning for messing with a married Mm. man. Some states are starting to do something about that. You can sue a woman for messing with your married husband. Wow. That's what happened to an old girl. Um, You can sue somebody for getting a you can sue a, a wife can sue a mistress. For Ass Fantasia. <laughs> Ass Fantasia. I think it's North Carolina where what? the wife was suing her for messing with her husband. Because you knew they better. Should have, they should have been had laws like this wow. if they're going to keep making all of the scandalous laws. Because, uh, I mean, I'm the first one to tell you, the sisters, a lot of the sisters, not all of them, but a lot of the sisters take advantage of these laws that are set up mm-hmm. to criminalize and villainize black men. 
you know? And I, So, hey. Corey, you say the sisters are Sambos. Yeah. Because they've me, been trained that way. Let me say this. The character Samuel Jackson played in the movie, we tend to want to call those characters Uncle Tom's. But Uncle Tom in that story of, you know, the Br'er Rabbit and, you know, Uncle Remus and all that stuff. Uncle Tom was the hero. Sambo was the coon, was the guy, the sellout. We tend to call that sellout Uncle Tom, but really it was Sambo who played that role. So uh, Samuel L. Jackson is really the Sambo in that film. And he played the hell out of it. I mean, I wanted to hate Samuel after watching well, that was, shit. Samuel Jackson is a, a, a brilliant actor. A brilliant. So when Absolutely. you put him in something like that, I can just imagine the takes. Mm. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I'm sure they laugh it off. But at the same time, this is going to be shown to the world. Yeah. And, you know, do you put stuff out there that you're proud of? That's right. what I was thinking. Like, uh, uh, when they were filming that, were, were, were the black people on set proud of what they're doing? I, I, I Man, that echoes a question I had today when I was saying, how does this film, image-wise, help us globally? It Does, doesn't. That's yeah, I asked all of them, white men, educators, whoever was in the room. How does this help us globally? I can honestly say this. If I was the type of guy who wanted to audition and take it seriously, right. I really believe I would be doing acting roles in Hollywood. Right. When casting directors see me, they're like, hey, it's Corey. You know what I mean? Right. But I've never been interested mm -hmm. in being part of that Hollywood machine that makes me put out stuff that i'm not proud of i i can't do it well we can can, can we can uh, i don't think we can imagine or assume that fox isn't proud of the django role i think he's very proud well you know i'm i'm not jamie fox and you know what i'm saying he's mm -hmm. willing to do that i'm not knocking jamie fox for acting right i'm not but it's it's a very serious time in america for black people right and a movie like that only justifies, in my opinion, Caucasian people saying what they say about us. Let me ask you this. How did you feel when you were young and you f the first time you saw Roots and then you went back to school? Because I remember when I first saw it and I went back to school, I was looking at white people real side eye. How did you feel when you went, you know, what was your intake of people when you went back to, to school after seeing Roots? Well, I was young. I know. I was like in fourth grade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you were so shocked right? as a kid to see something like that. Um, and this is what I want to say. All of this stuff is what you are allowed to see. Mm -hmm. um, they will show you things on television to program your mind a certain mm -hmm. way. But there were things that happened besides Caucasian glory. Um, during all of that stuff, you know Absolutely. what I mean. There were there were there were times when like ships what? were overtaken. Oh yeah, they made a movie Amistad about it. Mm -hmm. Ships were overtaken by the brothers. Yeah, um, they got free, and they, they, they. There's not a lot of movies that show the other side of the game. There's most of the movies show us cooning, mm -hmm. getting beat up, mm -hmm. um, looking stupid in front of our women, because that movie. Um, <laughs> Uh, Django, when they went to, uh, was it Big Daddy's uh, place? That shit was funny. And the baddest chick he, he, belonged he, to Leonardo he, DiCaprio? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm talking about the first time when they went to the other, the dude who used to play in Miami Vice, Don Johnson. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When Down in Chattanooga, there, where I'm from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? It was black women everywhere, and they were trained to look down on you the hear brother. the girl was calling him daddy? Right. Calling the slave master daddy? Yeah. Oh, God. That's what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> Hollywood is going to show that. Oh, yeah. Hollywood is not going to show. Nat Turner. Right. No, no. They're not going to show the strong side of the brothers. No, no, they no. Won't, no. They no. want to program you into thinking <laughs> that you are weak. You are nothing. Uh, and, and this is the one thing I will say about um, an interview I heard Jamie Foxx say. He said, um, I get to shoot white people. I was like, Really? <laughs> That's embarrassing, man. Don't say that. <laughs> Do you know what happens in that movie? You sit and watch brothers get slaughtered wow. to go get some bitch you back already beat up. You wouldn't <sighs> get a new bitch. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying. This motherfucker went 
through hell to go get this bitch you back already wore out. <laughs> I'm just saying, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> that's me, mate. That's me trying to be funny, but the bitch back was beat up, <laughs> and they had it in that sweat box. I hope she ain't had no type of infection. That would have made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they had too many infections back then. Just come on, Corey. They wasn't hustling medicine like they are now. That's a whole <laughs> nother get down. <laughs> yeah, I know we got calls, man. We got to get some of them in. Let's because get them in here, people man. People ain't had a chance to say <laughs> nothing since last year. Who the first caller in 2013 on the 5150? Who did? Hey, it was Jeffrey. Hey, what's up, Jeffrey? Hey. Oh, Justin. No, that's cool. What's up? Oh, Justin, yeah. what it do? Yeah, I want to comment on the, how the effect the film might have internationally. I think it should be good if it highlights all the, the subtle nature of, like, the, like the beatings and a lot of the, you know, the two dudes fighting. What is it that, um, I, for, I forget what it was, whatever it was called. The but Mandingo the fighting. The, it was the Mandingo the fighting film. scene. Yeah. Like, if people get a chance to see the entire film, like, unedited, because I know a lot of countries edit the film for their audience, then they might actually take away something good from it, because when you see the actors, and they say the word nigga, and you see that anger in their face, you know there's something going on. Mm. So, hopefully that'll come through. Interesting. You know, I don't know. I, that's that's interesting, too, that they edit, it, they edit certain parts in certain countries. I, w I would love to see what they edit it. What I saw and what they didn't see or what they didn't that would see be interesting. what I didn't see. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, look at like Karate Kid, right? With uh, Will Smith's son. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like they edited the hell out of that film in China. And, you know, a lot of people saw it. I bet they didn't show her, show him kiss that girl, did they? Nah. Well, <laughs> they showed that. They showed the fighting scene. They didn't show like a lot of other things that mentioned, you know, Chinese people being, you know, pretty much assholes. Oh, <laughs> of yeah. course, no. We I, would, I would love to see that film, the edited version. The edited version want, of they Django. Want, they want the Asian people to see. I would love to see that. That would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. anyway, man, that's what's up. Thanks for the call, brother. Yeah, no, thank you, man. Yeah, that's what's up. We're going to take another caller. Hey, 5150 2013, first show. What's cracking? Who did? So Wonder in the house. 2013 was good. So Wonder, what up, man? Going on. Did you have a good New go. Year Eve? What you do New Year's Eve? Not a goddamn thing. I had to work the next morning, so I oh. couldn't do shit. Oh, okay. Well, there it is. Tell wifey we say what up. Uh, wifey, Corey Hope says what's up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what? What's uh, cracking though, man? See, I talk about see, I talk about Django. Huh? Yeah, we talking about the Coon City film. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, but um, I had a conversation with somebody about it. Now I kind I have mixed feelings about it because I'm a big fan of Quentin Tarantino movies and stuff like that. But I am a proponent of you know you have to be careful about what you portray out there. But as far as Hollywood, Hollywood has done this for forever. So I don't think I think as black people, it's our responsibility, you know, especially as men, to teach to teach other folks, you know, the truth. Because you never gonna get the truth out of Hollywood. They're gonna have they're gonna portray what they wanna portray. You like you were saying about Nat Turner and you will never get you never get you gonna never get the other side of it. Now that on a scale that big. Maybe on a lower budget film, but not on that kind of scale. You'll never get it. Good man, point. That's what's up, man. That's a good point. So mm -hmm. one of the thanks for calling, man. Okay. We uh we uh you know what I you know what I called Samuel Jackson's character in that movie? What? That's Obama. Ooh. Samuel Jackson wow. portrayed wow. Obama in that movie. And I'm going to give you an example. <laughs> I'm going to give you an example. Let me, let me give you an example. And this is really, because I know people don't think like this. When those <laughs> kids in Connecticut were killed, mm -hmm. and nobody roots for that, right. whether they're black, white, whatever. Nobody right. roots for that. Nobody wants to see kids killed, right. period. That was, that was horrific. Right. But, but, let me tell you something. It was a lot of Caucasian children. Now, in the city where Obama's house is, right. children are killed all the time. Mm. And I didn't see him on TV crying about that. So you're saying him in crying. In other countries, hold on, mm -hmm. where them drone strikes hit. I'm talking about 
children, right, same right. ages as those kids, are right. killed and they're looked at as collateral damage or military aged militants, whatever you want to call as they them. label it. I saw that movie Fahrenheit 9 11 again, yeah, yeah, and you know, these are kids with limbs shot off or mm. ripped off. You see this stuff hanging out of them, yeah. and you never hear the outcry, but here it is in Connecticut now, and like I said. The gunman who did that, that was a cowardly act. Right. I'm not condoning that. But right. what I'm saying, when these Caucasian ki- children were killed, he was crying just like Samuel Jackson was crying when his <laughs> Caucasian master died. Wow. Who agrees or disagrees with Corey's disposition this here? Somebody Barack call Obama. us right now. 323-965-1600. This is very controversial. What was, what was, what was uh, Obama's, I mean, uh, uh, Samuel Jackson uh, character's name in the movie? I forgot his name. What was his name? Somebody call us and tell us his name. 323-965-1600. I forgot his name. This is, this is who Obama is. He, he, he was hurt. Yes. You know what well, was interesting? Was obvious. Did you see the scene when he told, uh, uh, what's the white character, uh, DiCaprio's character's name? Well, anyway, DiCaprio's character. He told Master. him. Massa, he told him to come to the library. Right. And when he went to the library, Samuel L. Jackson spoke perfect English. Yeah. You know, he didn't have a yes, sir, boss twang. He didn't have no country accent. It was, these fools <laughs> is playing you, Pim. He right. had the whole get down. And again, maybe that's who Obama is behind closed doors, too. Yeah. Well, well he talks good. Um I'm talking about he talks real good when That's doors are open, point. but when the doors are closed and he back there talking to them bankers and the people who with real power. Wow. Ain't no telling how. I just won't get reelected. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying he's backing? I'm just saying, man. I mean, come on, so Man, I, I, I'm just happy the dude is, I mean, you know, a nice little iconic image for black folk. Black men in, in general. Image is one thing, but who you are, I think that's more important. Ooh, okay, Corey Hope. They, they gave Elvis Presley a good image in the press. They gave Elvis Presley a good image in the press, but he said some racist things at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, you yeah. know, when people be like, hey, it's Elvis. I'm John like, Wayne, too. John Wayne. Yeah. You know what I mean? Image. Yeah, okay, all image. Right. <laughs> Obama is an image. That's all he is. Wow. An uh, image. Corey Holcomb is on one, ladies and gentlemen. 2013, the first 5150 show. Corey Holcomb back in the building. If you want to speak to him right now, call us, 323-965-1600. We got callers in here. Let's see what they talk about. What up, bitch? The 5150 show. Who this? This is Gio, man. Happy New Year, Corey. Hey, what's up, man? Happy what's New Year. What's going on, Zoe, man? Oh, what up, pimples? Hey, man. Hey, Corey. Man, this, the, 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 the gangster shit that... Quentin Tarantino did all he did do he did the movie. He got the action figures out now, man. I he heard got the action Slave figures. Action figures. I saw ahead. I saw that on um Twitter today. I wanna get the action figure of Samuel Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> because that is that and I wanna mail this action figure. I'm gonna get I'm gonna buy a lot of them and just mail it to people I know. I'm uh, saying, special he's gonna, people. He's gonna make more money off of the action figures with probably the movie. That's wow. what's gonna be crazy. That's what I'm saying, man. He's smart. He's smart. He know. Wow. Now, Clint, would you have done that movie if, if if somebody if he had offered you a role? Twenty million dollars. Well, see, I'm not. I can turn down stuff like that because I've never had twenty million dollars at one time. So right. by me not having it, you know, what I'm you're saying? not gonna it, miss it, right? I'm not gonna <laughs> miss it. I, I'm. It, you know, it's like I. You can never say never in this town, right? Because I'm sure there's a lot of actors who are proud, um, who have given in. To oh I need this money. Right. I've been out here struggling so long, and I can I can say this about what I know I won't do. I won't. You won't never see me in a dress. Mm. You won't never see me in a dress. So Lipstick and all that. You're not gonna go the Martin route, the Wesley Snipes route. You're not gonna see it. You you you're not gonna do it. You're not gonna see it. Wow. And and you think that's part of the game? Because even Dave Chappelle talked about how at some point they're gonna try to get you in a dress. Well, that's what they do. That's it's your way of being emasculated. Initi- it's your initiation. Mm. You have to do this. If you wear a dress, then we can take get, you to the next level. We can put you in this action movie after you do that. But wow, 
your initiation is to shame yourself in front of the people, and they try to act like it's comedy, but it's not comedy. You're doing it on purpose. You want wow. me to look stupid in front of the people that matter. Let me ask you this. Would you say the majority of black Hollywood would take a check to play a coon or a stereotype than to say, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stand on my, my principles and, and build who, my own. The only actors who won't do it, in my opinion, I'm talking about true actors, mm. are the actors who rich. Like Denzel, and they can they can look down. Well, Fox is rich. Like he didn't that. have to. He didn't have to do it. He's already rich. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you say he's so rich that he could turn down this role. I think Fox could have turned down this Django role. I'm not sure about what's going on with Jamie Fox, but I know he has new management, and they have to initiate him to make sure that he is. Um, Are you speaking of willing? some type of secret society initiation? Well, I'm just saying, man. It's like, come on, man. Jamie Foxx, th this is for real. Right. I'm, not, I'm not being phony when I say this. He can act. Then, like a motherfucker. Jamie Foxx can act, man. Right. And so to take this role, why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you saying, oh, he's been to the mountaintop. 2006, saying, Oscar. Oscar. Ray, he, he didn't Oscar. he didn't need to do this, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I mean, wow. no, I, I don't feel like no proud black man wants to do that. Wow. So when it's done, it's politics. It's dues being paid. You see what I'm saying? You got to do this before we let you do you this, this, saying? and that. I'm sure he's connected with powerful people mm -hmm. in Hollywood that are going to put him in roles where he's going to shine. Wow. But. This come on man, this game is cruel. Look at what Denzel did, and look at what he won the Oscar for. <laughs> you know what I mean? Should have got the Oscar for Malcolm. But Malcolm, uh, he became Malcolm X. The dude who was in jail. Uh, uh, Tuki. Hurricane. Yeah, Hurricane Carter. You know I mean? <laughs> man, Denzel has done some some powerful heat. acting out there. But yeah. you know, it's it's a joke. We gonna give you the Oscar for it's being a, a criminal cop. What was the name of the movie? <laughs> Precious. Yeah. How is that movie going to get Oscars out of that? I mean, like, be for real. You didn't think Precious was good as far as the best, Monique? The best scene in Precious was when they showed her flip down the stairs holding that bank. <laughs> that was Why brilliant. is that the best? That spot? was brilliant. I, was, I don't even know how they shot that. <laughs> That was brilliant. <laughs> this bitch just flipped down the motherfucking stairs <laughs> like a running back holding the ball up. <laughs> but it was a baby. How did the baby not get injured? What she know. do? Mama threw an iron out, off the stairs, hit the bitch in the head. <laughs> they just do the most degrading shit. And they be like, that's the Oscar movie right yeah, there. Yes, right that's there. Right there. We're going to give them the Oscar for that one. So, <laughs> what? Oh, callers. Okay, we got callers. Poet has got us. <laughs> no, get them in, because I know they got something to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, 50, what 50? Speak on it. Who did? Oh, this Ken from St. Louis. I had a comment. I think that movie uh, Django. It was, you know, it was, it was a modern day nigga wake up call for all of us who think, you know, we part of the uh, who, who feel like we under the losing, we part of the inclusion. Um, I, I think agree. that's what mm -hmm. that movie represented. We kind of got relaxed. I mean, I didn't agree with the movie because when I when that movie was over, I went home and read the autobiography of Malcolm X ten times, and I watched the movie Panthers twenty times. So you know, I was I was ready to trip <laughs> for a minute, but oh, yeah. I had to kind of pull myself together because it's just like. We need those movies, but probably uh, presented in a different light. But if that's if, if it takes those type of movies to get those to get these discuss to get these discussions going, then that's what we need. Mm -hmm. Then also, I think only a person like Jamie Foxx could play that role. I wouldn't see Denzel or Will uh, play that role. I think Jamie Foxx deep down has an issue with his blackness. You know, if you go back to that interview that he had with uh, Quinn Tarantino probably about two or three weeks ago, they kind of touched a lot of topics. And I don't think any, like, like Corey said, I don't even think no real man would have played that role. I know I wouldn't have played that role. So I think, you know, it's a, it, it, it's open, it, open, it, it opens a lot of wounds, but it, it's causing a lot of good discussion. Yeah, that's, that's true. Up. And he's right, but we don't know what the hell Jamie Foxx is thinking. And at the end of the day, I know... 99.99999% of every regular dude would have took whatever payday Fox got to play Django. They would have took it just like Fox took it. And Fox may be taking it for different reasons. But a regular cat might be taking it because that's a $15 million, $20 million paycheck. Fox probably took it because he wants to take his career to the next level. He wants to do something shocking. We don't know the mind state of this, brother. So to say that he ain't a real man. Now, we can raise the question and say, 
Why would someone who is content with their blackness, content with their culture, and understand their culture do a film like that? We can raise the question, but to suppose we know or to label the brother, to judge him as not a real brother, I mean, that's, well, that's something he would have to it. speak on. This is what I'm going to say about it. You have to read that script. <laughs> I read it. Now, when you read that script, Going into filming something like that, you know this is going to be an uncomfortable experience. If you are one who is proud to be a black man, this yeah. is a very uncomfortable experience. Well, so, yeah. like somebody say, well, who wouldn't do it? Well, it's all hypothetical because the next man ain't going to get what they paid the next man. You see right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. This guy make this much money to do the movie. The next guy make this much money to do the movie. So what I'm saying is, if you are a brother who has pride in yourself, mm -hmm. reading that script... Would have turned your stomach. Yeah. Uh, well, I know I would have been like, oh, I'm good. I can't. <laughs> I'm How good. am I going to look at the and minister? like I say, <laughs> I'm not in a situation... Like, this is what people have to understand. The more money you make... Mm -hmm. The more money you need mm. because your lifestyle changes. Change. Yeah. So if you're in a position where you need this money, this payday that's going to come from doing this film because you didn't um, committed money here, committed money there. You'll be like, fuck it. I'll pull this off because the next movie there had me ain't going to shine me in the light where I ain't looked at like that. Right. 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 You know, that's that's the politics of this game. You got to do this dirt. We need you to do this dirt and then we'll bring the glory. Right. Well, to argue to argue for Fox, to be the devil's advocate here, what's the difference in doing that film than what than the difference of doing a show like this or a show like mine? I think my whole purpose is to make people uncomfortable, ask uncomfortable questions, have uncomfortable conversations, right? That's what I try to do on the radio. I know you do the same thing. We try to bring that level of edginess to the table so people can look at themselves. Maybe this film was... Yeah, but maybe that's the purpose of this film. I don't know. Well, I tell you this: I'm not doing it to make people uncomfortable. I'm really not. What are you doing? It I'm doing it to <laughs> I'm doing it to raise awareness. Because Sometimes raising awareness makes people uncomfortable. We hey, and that's 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 what comes with it. Right. But I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Right. The, what I have to say might make you uncomfortable, but it's not my intention to fuck your day up. But unfortunately, sometimes <laughs> when you talk straight up to people, you fuck their day up. Done deal. Right. <laughs> Let's get these callers in. Hey, what's up, 5150 Show? Thanks for calling. Who this? What's happening, man? What it do? Shit, man. Hey, I called to call in about um, earlier about the Sambo. Which one is, you know, which who's, who's bigger Sambo, um, the women or, or men? Yeah. I think black women, man, I hate to say it, but at the end of the day, a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, they, they tend to wear their dishonor as a, you know, wear their dishonor as a, on their sleeve, man, and just always have negative things to say about us, throwing us under the bus. If you look at this, this right now, the biggest controversy with this, um, Shawty Lowe thing with his 10 baby mamas. And my whole thing is, look at all the reality shows prior to that. It's all women basketball wise the love and hip hop but now they want to petition this show and even though the show is ratchet to sit there and want to petition it come on man you know what I'm saying so that's a good point that's a great point that's, you know I mean, I mean at the end of the day, I'm just saying you gotta she look said that she, what it uh, is and nobody petitioned these shows I mean and, and not only nobody petitioned the shows the, the poetess ratings, hold on brother I, hold on real quickly I mean, the poetess is very upset with you right I'm now <laughs> she said he's wrong they put the heart, they petitioned it, those shows as well like, here she comes she's coming to clear this up um i just want to say you're misinformed that there <laughs> they have been petitioned and protest because of all the negative fighting and negativity of the show so i just <laughs> wanted <laughs> to correct <laughs> you on that and i understand the og poet is you feel me i got a, a lot of love and respect for you but at the same time there's a lot of i mean the whole evelyn thing Think about that. I mean, they was fighting on that show prior to the old, um, the old Chino thing, whatever. You feel me? So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's been fights on, you know, uh, basketball-wise. I mean, this shit has what been... What else is them bitches going to you know? do? They ain't shit. <laughs> they ain't shit bitches. If you look at their history, they ain't shit bitches. That's wow. all. What the fuck else have they accomplished in life? Besides, okay, when you have kids, that's a natural thing that God makes come true. Mm -hmm. But everything that they're in charge of ain't shit. 
Everything, wow. every move they made ain't shit. They get passed around, and ain't nothing wrong with it. I put it like this. I'm not judging you for not having the power to uh, 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 be fucking one person because I'll be yeah. the last motherfucker to judge somebody on some shit like that. But what I am saying is this. Bitch, how can you stand there proud like you are on point and you a stand-up bitch? You ain't shit. Any motherfucker who fuck with you, they world gonna go backwards. Wow. That's most of the bitches on those reality <laughs> shows. They ain't shit. You know what's I interesting? Mean, you look at the Braxton alone. You, you look oh. at that. That's, that's modern day minstrel show. You know, all this shit to me is a modern day minstrel show. They might that's as well be point. a black face. They might as well be tap dancing with the damn cane and the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a modern day minstrel show in the way they act and they portray themselves. And it's no different from the 20s and the 30s, but it's just in today's terms and the way people do shit. But like I said, this is a majority of women. And what's sad is, this is the way they want to, it's almost like this is the, the status quo. This is how you should act, especially if you just want to be a no-name reality show. I mean, you know, actress or whatever, and you're treating these reality shows. It's the only way they're going to let, it's the only way they're going to, the only way they're going to let them bitches act. Is to go on there and do shit like that. You want some wow. shine for acting, you got to go on there and do this. And this is what I want everybody to realize about what this brother said. He's, he basically compared it to what they used to do in the 20s and 30s. The and all that. show, yeah. And this is what is allowed for you to see. They will not allow you to see the positive shit that can be done mm. or the positive sisters out there who are doing shit to help the community. They don't show them. They show these ain't shit bitches and they be in the club acting like they the shit. And mm. the shit makes me fucking look at them like, you lousy bitch. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the call, brother. We got to get ready to take a break. We got some more callers on. We're going to get them all on. Let's get them, man. <laughs> uh, 5150 Show. We'll be back. Hey, are you tired of those same old energy drinks with bad taste? Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale, lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale, lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products. For more information on Pitbull energy drinks, bars, and mixes, visit their website at hiphopbev.com. That's hiphopbev.com. Online orders available at hiphopbev.com.
No. <laughs> Enzymes and it'll tear her ass up. She oh. knows she can't drink no goddamn. Okay. Little, little. We back? <laughs> hey, we got to play that little push ass music because. Um, that shit is fly. Everybody likes it. That's that music you. Um, My homeboy produced all of these beats. You model in the mirror in front of that shit. <laughs> 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 anyway, stupid. that motherfucker trying to get cool with Kwame and some shit. Ah, anyway, oh, damn. We back, ladies and gentlemen. We've been talking about the travesty known as Django. Why is it a travesty? It's, it's grossed over a hundred million dollars. Hey, Amen. Damn. If you, get, if you get the people that dirty shit, they gonna drink it. Wow. Then you have another amazing topic. You yeah, had a good one. Another, I, did, I did have another topic. You had a great one. Oh, well, I do want to say something about this shit. What I heard, um, people who watch sports um, with Carmelo and... Um, oh, yeah. Garnett, KG, yeah. And he said something about Carmelo's wife. He and said, Carmelo went to go see him. Right. Because that is some shit to make motherfuckers mad when they done marry somebody and somebody else say something about them like they know them. What do you think he said? Well, what he, well, what I heard Carnett said was she tastes like Honey Nut Cheerios. Oh. That's what I heard he said. Wow. That was on the radio. Man. That's why your wife tastes like a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios. What's her name? What's her name? Lala. He said, yeah, that's why Lala. <laughs> Tastes like Honey Nut Cheerios. That's why Carmelo was mad. Because, you know, Carmelo, let me tell you something about Carmelo. Uh -huh. That day he did, the Carmelo did the world's record in backing up in a fight on TV <laughs> when he got into it with the Knicks. And he was playing for Denver at the time. And Who did he back up from? He was backing up from Jared Jeffries. Huh. Uh, amongst other players who was trying to get at him. <laughs> but he did not swing. He just bagged up. And I counted all the steps. <laughs> he bagged up 182 <laughs> steps <laughs> to avoid the fight. He was actually sitting in some little boy lap in the top row <laughs> before he engaged in the swinging. And well, I, 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 that's funny. Well, I were they trying to jump him? That. Were they trying to jump him? They weren't trying to jump him. He snuck somebody. He stuck somebody. And then backed up. And then backed up 182 <laughs> feet. <laughs> and sat on a little kid's lap. Oh, yeah. He basically was like, why they taking so long to break it up? <laughs> Everybody who saw that was laughing at that. I'm not dogging so Carmelo. You, you I'm don't a big think fan of Carmelo. But you see the courage that comes? When you say something about somebody's wife, yeah, well. <laughs> it's like he wanted to fight that motherfucker. Well, when you marry somebody, there's some pressure there. You yeah, got to do something. Say something about Lala. Oh, my <laughs> God. I will die. How you know she tastes like honey nut Cheerio? That's what I would have said. Damn. How you know she tastes like honey nut Cheerio? Damn. See what he's saying. You know, some guys lie on their dick. Well, you do motherfuckers like that. You just said all of those women are passed around in the, in a circle, so the chances of somebody knowing that she tastes like honey nut Cheerios is pretty high, don't you think? Well, yeah, you know, but then again, I don't know. I'm not gonna say nothing about your wife though, because I, I know that that's fighting shit. That's some, <laughs> he said they went to the to the he went to the Celtic bus. Yeah, he the was, team he, bus. He was ready to get out, dude. About yeah. that, that's funny. And one thing <laughs> I will say about Kevin Garnett, I have never seen him fight. I have seen him he, instigate a lot of fights. You don't think you don't think he can do it? I have never seen him fight. So you you, you want to see, see him, him talk a lot? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm tough. He yeah. look a little like Mark Breland. Like he might be able to do it. Well, Mark well, Breland had a weak chin. Have you ever seen a fight? <laughs> have you ever seen a fight? I've never seen KG swing. No, no. I've seen him talk. Well, he <laughs> talked up into Carmelo's head for sure. And Carmelo was trying to get at him, and he ain't fight him. Garnett, wow. I mean, let me tell you, Garnett is a very tall man, but he's thin. And I've had those type of fights before. I, those real tall, thin dudes, they, <laughs> they fall hard. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you're going to get your little one, two swings. This fight going to the ground. <laughs> and then it's over. And I'm going to ball you up in a way <laughs> where you're going to pray somebody break it up. <laughs> so I'm just saying. Oh, God. But back on that. I, I want. Uh, so you remember what I said earlier? Hmm. About, I just want to make sure I'm wording it right. I have the idea of the topic I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, I, what did I say? You were talking about people putting their best foot forward. The representative. Right. Like That's what it, I'm trying to make sure I say it right. Right. I, I have an issue with people, especially older people. Mm. When you're young and you're trying to find yourself in this world, sometimes... You get a pass. I'll give you a pass. Right. But people who are over 30 who step to people misrepresenting who they are mm. are part are a big part of the chaos in the world. Wow. The chaos in the world is 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 it, elevated as you lie when you meet people. Mm. And I'm talking a lot about men who lie and act like they this, act like they that, wind up getting serious with a woman. The woman find out you ain't about what you said you was. Mm. You ain't about that life. And by especially if you're dating an uh, inner city black woman, because if you've been messing with her for six months or more, a child is probably already involved in the situation. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. That's just some real shit. Black girls. It's on the way. After a month, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They willing to involve you in their life forever. We together forever. <laughs> right. Right. I'm do like my mama did, my daddy. Let's get started. Trouble. Anyway, but I'm saying like I I, I want to say to the to the fellas out there, you have to be for real when you're talking to people and then you introduce yourself because it's respected more. Mm. See what it is? Some guys see some girl that they just want to get with so fucking bad, so they'll go there and they'll say something. Just to be, you know, fuck it. Yeah, I'm Superman. Or whatever wow. the fuck. Wow. And then later on, the woman find out you ain't Superman. And she has no respect for you. And she bring it up one day when y'all argue. And, you know, I'm just saying. It's like representing who you are is very important as a man. Mm. Mm. That even goes back to that movie shit we was talking about. <laughs> but it's, real. it's acting. It's acting. That's, a, that's, that's what I want to clear up. Acting is different than real life shit. But when you meet a girl in the club... And she half naked, and you lie to her, that means that you half naked. <laughs> In my eyes, you might well have on a thong and a uh, baseball cap. But see, this goes back to that show we did when I said, I really believe that women are in control of this. Women are susceptible to the lies men tell. That's because, like I said before, Women, don't ever date your idea of a man. Date the real man. Because all the liar is going to do is conform to the idea you're projecting. That's why I say date the real dude. How do you date the real dude? First off, you got to challenge those ideas you got. Well, if you came from a broken family, chances are you're going to be looking for a broken relationship. You might not know it. But that's what you're looking for. How many times have we heard Pimp and Ken say, oh, I, I, you know, I'm going to be her daddy because she didn't have one. Right? Yeah. It, so, I, again, I just, challenge those ideas, ladies. Girls who come from poverty-stricken situations. <laughs> I don't like you. Girls right who come from <laughs> the hood. Right. Are looking for a way out the hood. They want to shine. And if you have any potential... Mm -hmm. to shine or if you already shining whatever the fuck you can basically pick which one you want wow if you got money and you drive through the hood you can get any motherfucking woman you want in that block radius of poverty really you can why and how 
because they don't want to be poor no more. So they'll do they whatever. They want to be able to go to the mall and buy the stuff they see on BET, MTV. So are you telling me those girls who are poor are really for sale to the dude that got the resources? And that is the truth. Damn. If you have money, poor <laughs> women are at your whim. What about women that are kind of uh, kind of all right? What about the girl that's working, got a job, you know, got a nice little job, got a nice little apartment, got her own car, got her own situation, but looking to move up? Well, the more cute enough have, to move up, the more they have, the prideful they are. Also, the more demands they lay down. Yeah, like you, take, you take a girl like um, who used to be married to Shaq. Mm -hmm. So Shawnee. Yeah. So to get her now, mm -hmm. you have to come with more. Mm. Because she has something. Ah. But if you meet pre Shaq Shawnee. How much is pre Shaq Shawnee worth? I'm just saying, <laughs> if you had a new Chrysler 300, <laughs> you could have got that ass. <laughs> a new Chrysler. <laughs> right, now you need the real Bentley to get that ass. Bro. Wow. <laughs> anyway, let's get some of these callers in. Damn. We'll talk shit all day. You already know. <laughs> hey, caller, this is Corey Holcomb from the 5150 Show. How are you? Happy New Year. What's your name? Hey, yo, what's going on, Corey, man? Happy New Year, bro. Hey, what's up, man? Wow. Hey, um, hey man, it's, it's McQuid from Cali, man. What do you do? Say I have some love, man. And um, I'm going to talk about that. Um, First off, that, that Django movie, man, that probably was the most racist shit they could have ever made. And and it go and and it, I was thinking about all the stuff you were saying. It goes back to that interview you and Darlene did. How you saying for people to come up in Hollywood? How they how they get fucked in the ass? All that other shit. Yeah. So you know, I feel like if people want to come up, especially black people, they got to do some sucky shit just to make it. Well, you know what? Yeah, man? It could have been it could have been more racist than it was. I mean, at least he got to kill off white folk, a slave. <laughs> that got to kill white folk that got paid. I mean, come on, man. Well, no, hold on. What about what he said about you got to do some weird shit to make it? Do you, you agree with that, though? Hey, I, I wouldn't have did uh, less than zero or six degrees of separation. However, I mean, some people got to do it because that's what they want to do. Though, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would have did lottery ticket for sure. <laughs> that's what's up. Thanks for the call, man. Let's get another caller in. 5150 Show, holla at a nigga. What up, man? What up, dude? Who that? Hey, man. Yeah, man. It's like this, man. I think everybody has a price, man. You know what I mean? Everybody got a price, Corey. Like, there's certain things that you are not going to do in the industry, and there's certain things that Zoe's not going to do in the industry that, you know, because you're not going to you're not gonna compromise your integrity. And, again, everybody's integrity and morals are not the same because a lot of those guys that, you know, when you want to say they're on a casting couch, a lot of people, they were doing that anyway just to survive. So they're saying, okay, so you saying I got to do what I was doing anyway, and you're going to give me this money and make so, me famous? Let so, Carla, so Carla, let me ask you this. Are you saying the person isn't for sale, but their integrity is for sale? Ab absolutely. Because for every person that won't, just like look at all the, the videos, like they talk about how men are misogynistic and he's watching the video. It ain't like we putting a gun up to these women's head. They line up around the block. There could be a thousand girls that say no. There's about 10,000 that will. Wow. It's just, it's just the way it is. Just like what Corey's saying. A lot of them girls in the, in the cities, hey, I can get on there. I can get with a rapper. I can get a sugar daddy. I might mess around and get one night stand with them and get pregnant. And I'm stripped. Right. I'm tired of roaches in the cornflakes. Yeah. I'm about to go do this. <laughs> it's, 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 it's what it is, man. And I just think, like, what I don't believe, man, like I said, I don't, I know for a fact that they wouldn't have allowed Spike Lee to do a, a, a Schiller's list. That wouldn't have happened. That it would never have happened. No. What I'm saying is, I don't care. Okay. We can live with Django. Django, we just, let's, let's look at it as art. Okay. It's a, it's a movie. Okay. We're not given the same autonomy. A Jewish person is not going to allow a black director to tell their story. But That's George Lucas could do Red Tails. Yeah, exactly. Why is that? It's like, why does this double standard. do Color Purple? Well, it's a why, stand double why standard. Why the fuck is the movie named Red Tails? Why does shit have to sound like some sissy <laughs> shit anyway? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the poetess is Porter, angry. Porter's about to bite her tongue off because when you said something about selling pussy, she was like, what's wrong no, with that? What's wrong with selling pussy? 
it's nothing wrong with it in my book. Hey, but no, I wanted to comment on on Zoe's show today. They talked about Django, and I and I really appreciate billionaire PA's comment on we're talking about Quentin Tarantino's movie why he do that why he why aren't we making our own movies we have enough millionaires and billionaires out there now to to finance our stories but we standing around complaining about what Quentin Tarantino did well Quentin Tarantino great point is a, Quentin Tarantino is allowed to make movies about niggas but black people who have the money and the resources to do these movies, if they did them, they wouldn't be on the big screen. Mm. Yeah. Caucasian why, people are in charge of that, and what they allow you to see is what they show you. <laughs> well, uh, and, and that's a great point. Thanks, caller. That's a great point with, that You'll Corey just made. You'll be selling that movie in front of the goddamn Roscoe's. Mm. You're saying they white... They let that shit get no airplay. <laughs> Corey, are you saying white directors and producers and whatever, they have the leeway to be edgy, to be experimental, to do some wildness. But black folks, w- when we make movies, we trying to make the next role bounce. We trying to make the next... Uh, what's the, what's the movie the- uh, that Steve Harvey just had um, uh, for his book? Like a- Think Like a Lady, Act Like a Man. We trying to make the next Medea. We trying to make the next... We're trying to speak to a market where sometimes white people just say, I'm being creative... Let me and I an got example. creative license. Is that what you're saying? Let me give you an example. BET won't play videos that have anything to do with black people being strong. Mm. If you want a video on BET, Ooh. you got to be dancing or bragging. Ooh. Dancing or bragging about your chain or bragging about your Damn. hair, bragging about your shades. It's, uh, that is what that is what Hollywood offers black filmmakers. Wow! If you have a powerful movie that will change the way oh hell no Hollywood has taught people to think oh hell no it will not be allowed not in their not in their so world. you're saying uh, uh, media so you're saying in the war against regular folk to keep their minds locked in a box Hollywood is the biggest propaganda machine. Of course. I mean, like Hollywood is what it is. It, wow. Hollywood and the government are entwined to make sure that the stories that are shown are the stories that are OK by the same people who capitalize off black people, poor people. Um, so you think it's their intent to make the black people, poor people, disenfranchised people, whatever, minorities, whatever you want to call it, ethnic people. You think it's the goal of Hollywood to ultimately make these types of people feel bad about when themselves? 9-11 mm. went down, BET broadcasting was taken off the air and they had CNN wow. showing on BET. Wow. Because your opinion about what happened is not what they want out there. Wow. They don't want your opinion like a black newscaster and the newscasters on CNN. Right. Fit the description of what they call well, safe. Didn't they have the, the the one black cat from BET? What was his name? Ron Brown or something like that? Light-skinned cat that was on um, BET. He was an anchor and they moved him over. I know that they got one brother who always preached about <laughs> black people with quality. What is his name? Al Sharpton? Yeah. But he beat down. Mm. He got old. Right. So they were able to come to him and say, look, we can get you off the street. You ain't got to hustle your speeches no more. But we need you to go on this airway and speak in this lane. We need you to speak in. So you're saying they bought Al his Sharpton. Soul. You can only fight for so long. The only on the 5150 show, ladies and gentlemen. He was a, he was a soldier gentlemen. for years, man, but he eventually gave in. What was his start? Wasn't he a hustler? He gave in because he's doing a TV show? Get on the mic, poetess. Where is Al Sharpton <laughs> of 80s, the 1980s Al Sharpton? The it's Roscoe's chicken and waffle eating. People check. <laughs> Where is his place on CNN? He's not talking about that stuff no more. Because he's evolved. Because he got to eat. That wow. too, but what's wrong with that? Why are you knocking his hustle? I'm not knocking nobody. Wait a hustle. minute, maybe the I'm, hustle is the problem. I'm calling out why you have a job on CNN. All those years, what's wrong of with talking? That, all well, pro black, 
all them years of talking all that power, they know eventually you go give in. It's, but, it's hard out but there. But he's still in community activism. In community, I would say it is activism in the sense of we need the wayward brothers to get in alignment, get with the program. If Al, because they're not putting anybody on. And let me ask you if this. Al what is your say opinion? some real shit, his show will be gone. Bye, Al. What is it? <laughs> He'll be back out here. Al Sharpton will be performing at goddamn it. Um, <laughs> the uh, Al Sharpton uh, juicer. Uh, 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 Missionary <laughs> Baptist Church. <laughs> He don't want to go back out there. It's cold world out there. It's a cold world. I know what the fuck he's doing. I'm like, they finally got to the Pope brother. He gave in. Again, if all of these, if Rupert Murdoch, if Rupert Murdoch, who runs Fox, if they say the majority, like a handful of corporations own all of the media outlets, Come on. How can you get on? You can't become a writer for the Los Angeles Times, Chicago Tribune, New York Times, unless you're in alignment with the philosophy that they're trying to push. Let's if, just be real. If my Twitter is red, mm-hmm. which is at the Corey Hoka, by the way, at the Corey Hoka, <laughs> that's my Twitter. If my Twitter is red by anyone who mm-hmm. is trying to hire me in mainstream television, they will be like, no, this guy cannot go on. Mm. Unless we take him through the little desensitive test that obviously Al Sharpton had to go through because he would not have a show. You're saying Al Sharpton is not as sharp as he used to be. He's not the old Al Sharpton. Wow. Now he is the controlled Al Sharpton because he cannot wow. go there. He will be back in the streets. And <laughs> now he old. You know, when you get his age, you, <laughs> got, to pay, you got to pay for companionship Ooh. when you his age. So did he have to pay for... What's the little girl on, on the single lady show that he was dating for a second? Or well, whoever he was dating, it's because of that. Who was that? Lisa Ray. If he was dating her, she a hustler. I, I can see that. She from the town. She from Chi Town, right? right she <laughs> getting her paper on this goofy motherfucker. Gonna take care of me. I'm a fucker. Wow. Three two three nine six five sixteen hundred. May the God bless this union of Damn bullshit. It. I'm just calling out the real shit. I'm sorry. When you see when you see a brother like Al Sharpton who has been outspoken for years. Especially for black people. All that black people shit to fade it away. Watch the show. It's done. Watch it. I watch the show. I'll be like, they got my nigga. <laughs> <They> <laughs> no more black me. people talk, huh? Right. Yeah. Well, we need to come together as a world. <laughs> Sponsored by <laughs> Tide. <Right. laughs> That's the real shit. I'm sorry. Wow. So, Jeez. Porters, Porters was like, black people need to use their money to make movies. Oh, they'll just have them movies to show their kids at home. Like you said, they'll be on the street right. selling them. <laughs> yeah, but maybe that's where we start. That is where we start, though. It is. You and, have to create your own and Hollywood. And creating our own distribution networks, etc. But, but why you, did we... Uh, how come we've this? never done that? No, 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 no. It has been done. Who did it? First of all, what did BET start as? Black entertainment television, videos, when you, Donnie Simpson. When you grow uh-huh. and you become watched by masses, uh-huh. them motherfuckers are coming to knock on your door. Viacom. To let you know, we can give you some money for this shit or we going to just take the shit. But you're not going to spread that. Oh, no, no, spread. no. Well, you're not going to change All right, these so let's say this. Let's say this. Did Was was <laughs> BET more positive and community-centric before its sell to Viacom? Of course, BET. They Let me had tell you. Teen Summit. They right. had news programs. Wow. Look at everybody with a show on BET. It is not a coincidence. So, them motherfuckers out there. So I ask you this directly. Is Deborah Lee an agent? Deborah Lee. The, the, the one who okays you know, everything at BET, the sister. Oh, they, let me tell you something. The brother who created the, the show, The Boondocks. Let me tell you something. Boondocks season two. Cold-blooded. They had two episodes that they would not allow on television. Which ones were But they are on the box set. The box set. If you buy the box set, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm plugging season two because Aaron um, Magruder. Magruder mm-hmm was deep when he wrote this shit mm-hmm. talking about that lady who you just said. That mm-hmm. lady is an agent. Oh, yeah. She works yeah, for yeah, the yeah. devil. Yeah, I remember that episode. Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't even show it on TV. That It was the Uncle Ruckus reality show. Yes, yes. And they showed the one about her. Yes, she's an agent. Wow. She was put there to... Con- Look who she has hosting the goddamn BET Awards. Mm-hmm. Who hosted it this it's year? It's Coon 
city. Mm. Wow. Coon City. They ain't going to have nobody who's going to do no shit to make people think, to make people... Um, but we live in a culture where thinking is bad anyway. No, because that's it all It ain't they, even cool. That's all they put on the air. You gay if you use big words or if your English is correct. Or no, they put if you people study, who but, gay on there using big words. They don't have... <laughs> like uh, who? They don't have <laughs> real me men talking. Give Especially, me an example. Oprah Winfrey is the greatest example mm. of a black woman in power who will not have a real man on her show. Why? You give me a guest of hers that is a strong black man. Why wouldn't she do it, Corey? Because she doesn't want her show to be taken off the air. <laughs> do you remember what happened when Arsenio Hall had Farrakhan? Farrakhan on it, his show? it took him what? How he many just years? Just getting back. He just got back. It was a twenty-year hiatus. <laughs> that motherfucker so had to live with niggas for years. <laughs> and that ain't no diss, Arsenio. I love you to death. They sent him home to the niggas. What he did, <laughs> what Arsenio Hall did with putting the minister on there was bold. It was revolutionary. Yeah, and 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 the people in charge showed you what happened. Right. When you put strong black men on television, hey, you can change the way people think. And That's it's cold. Not gonna happen. Said Dave Chappelle. Well, Dave Chappelle did the same thing. Well, Dave Chappelle got the money. and But you know, and Mo D broke this down to me too. Once you get the money, that's when the white control system steps in and goes, now we done paid you. So we want to add this and we want to do this. And then you, now you have to wear the dress. And, you know, they start coming in with all the extra. Dave Chappelle and Dave bolted. the number one show on television on right. a network that wasn't even on the map like that. Right. Comedy Central. Dave Chappelle made Comedy Central as large as it is. Even right. though I like the Colbert Report yeah. and that other guy. Those guys are good. But yeah. they weren't doing what Dave Chappelle. No. Dave Chappelle DVD was selling on the street like he was some big time rapper. <laughs> right, right, this is right. a goddamn TV show. Yeah, yeah. But Dave Chappelle mm -hmm. was not allowed to be part of the business of his show. Mm -hmm. They wanted to buy him out. They mm -hmm. wanted to give him a certain amount of money mm -hmm. and get the fuck on nigga. Right. But they wouldn't allow him as they allow Caucasian people to be part of the business of the show. The back end. This, right. This yeah. show is growing this network. You won't allow me to be part of the growth of, of the network. Right. Right. Because I'm always going to be on the outside looking in. You want to keep me over here on my show. You want to give me this little funk ass $50 million. <laughs> right. And my motherfucking DVDs alone. Right. Going to sell $50 million in one state. And and imagine, if you could if you could give me $50 million, imagine how much he's grossing for you. Mm. Man, look, it's a slap in the face amount of money. Yeah. That's why people was like, shit, $50 million, that nigga's stupid. But that's why I was about it's to say like, the average nigga be like, he Dave, crazy as hell. Dave Chappelle ain't stupid. Mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle be faded. I ain't going to lie. But that <laughs> motherfucker ain't stupid. <laughs> His parents yes. are educated people. Right. He know what the fuck he was supposed to get as he grew. His show and that network, but is he and now? He basically said, "Fuck y'all." That's why you don't see him but because they he... say, "Oh, that boy won't play." Right? He won't play ball. Right? He won't do Django. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Wow, the I'm phone lines you... are open. <laughs> hey, I'm just putting you up on game. We got a call. Look, damn, get him on the line. Hey, this is the 5150 show. Uh, Corey's black ball um, <laughs> tunnel to hell. <laughs> black ball. What's cracking? Who did? Hello? Hey, what up? Who there? This is C from Bethesda. Hey, what's up, brother? Personally, I like the Django movie. I don't see why people took it so serious because that was some funny shit, man. Come on. It has some funny scenes in it. I'd never take that away. And then, I know like, it was one of the first actual movies they have to show like a slave actually standing up whooping white folks' ass and stuff just like Old beat down slave like the same old fucking routine. Right, yeah, I feel you. That was good too. Is this Samuel? <laughs> <laughs> what 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 city from the south you from, brother? Uh I'm from this little punk ass town called Monroe, Alabama. Yeah, I already knew. <laughs> I, already knew. I knew this was a country boy. Go get me some hog head cheese and some crackers. <laughs> they treat us good yeah, down here. <laughs> You can't take fucking Hollywood serious. You can't. They put bullshit out all the time. They always did. Like the same bullshit they always show about black people poor and all that bullshit. They never show about all the white people poor. And when you come like Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, man, white people are poor as fuck. 
Yeah, you right. I'm talking about like four o'clock in the morning waiting on the welfare office to open up and shit. Yeah. And I observed this shit, but they always show black people or other minorities. They never yeah, show true. anybody else. That's, that's true. real. So, yeah, that's true. That's a great point, brother. That's a great point, man. Thanks for the call. We're gonna get these other calls oh, here. But he one made other thing. he made uh, a great no, point. Uh, 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 true, uh, uh, true movie. What happened? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, if you wanna see a real movie that kind of that will make you really think shit over, watch this uh find this movie on Amazon dot com called The Spook That Set by the Black Door. Uh The Spook That Set by the Door. You this, know about that, Zach. Uh, of course. Yes. yes. We know about it. That's a, uh, you watching good shit, brother. Keep up the good thing. And, and we appreciate the suggestion, for sure. Out there in Alabama. Go on, have some sweet tea and shut it down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, boy, we go to Alabama. They got, the, they got diabetic sweet tea out oh, there, boy. Jesus. That shit down, boy. You drink that shit, boy. You going to be in bed shaking like you was in the movie Beat Street. <laughs> anyway, hey, caller, what's up? This is the 5150 show. You talking to Corey Holcomb and Zoe Williams. What's <laughs> cracking with? <laughs> Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. I can hear you now. What's cracking? Okay, yeah. I had a comment. You had uh, mentioned something about everybody got a price. That was one thing that I had took from the movie The Godfather. You know, they always give mm -hmm. you a price that you, they always give you an offer that you can't refuse. Mm -hmm. Look at Ken Williams. Everybody thinking Ken Williams going crazy, but you got to really look into that whole situation. Why Ken acting out that way, right? That's a good example. He probably don't want to conform. Then another uh, good thing, another good movie that came out about slavery, it came out about 10 years ago. It's called Sankofa. Yeah. It was a powerful movie, but it didn't get the publicity. And to kind of piggyback off what Porter said, you know, if we take up uh, a collection and um, put the money behind our own movies, you'll be amazed. But one thing before I go, something that they do in the music industry, they'll give you a record deal, right? But they'll never, which is a distribution deal. The, the power is in distribution. And if we can take that approach, then, you know, sky's the limit. Let's go deeper. That's a great point. Let's go deeper. Okay, about 10, 15 years ago. Explain. First of all, we need to explain distribution to the people who don't know what that that's is. That's why I said that's a great point. All, uh, with distribution, that's the process for us making, shipping, and just, you know, getting the music out to the masses. It's, I could give you a record deal. That's nothing. But the money is in distribution. Like you said, it's nothing for them to give David Chappelle $50 million. They can give him fifty million. That means they probably made a quarter of a billion dollars. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I'm, and just one more comment before I leave. Uh, about ten, fifteen years ago, Suge Knight, Irv Gotti, and Jay Prince, they were going to put put together this conglomerate where they were going to have a distribution company. And I quote: I don't know what article of the source it was, but they said, "As this article go public, watch the feds come and take us down." They took Suge down. They tried to get Jay Prince. But they couldn't get nobody to snitch on them, and they took down Irv Gotti. So, um, you know, man, we got we got we got work to do, man. You know, my professor told me we got to wake up, stand up, clean up, and we got to get mobilized. We wow. got to get to work, man. Wow, that's a great point, and he covered everything that I was gonna say. I was gonna say, as soon as we do something like getting our own distribution, yeah. that's when we become in public enemy number one. Right. Because they understand the power is in distribution. They understand that. But the moment we understand, remember, Bill Cosby tried to buy. I already knew. Tried to you buy the NBC. Yeah. They was like, oh, hell nah. You it's, know. It's, you know. It's, it's, it's deep, man. It's deep. It, it, it's so deep. It's crazy. And I, I don't buy into that Illuminati stuff, but it, it's deep, man. It's like. Uh, it's not really it's, deep, y'all. I mean, we say deep as a word. Right. Like, but it's not well, deep. Saying, it's I'm, just I'm bottom line. Words, if you say certain things, right, like uh, like a lot of stuff that Zope, you know, he, 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 he speak about, it's heavy. The average person ain't going to be able to take it at face value. They're like, what do you think he's talking about? He's philosophizing. That's but real. When you are educated, you won't, you won't understand it. I'm saying it's deep in the – because you, won't have, you have to be in a certain mindset to deal with a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. that you see. Like, people don't understand. People sell their soul. Yeah, people will sell their soul. They are willing to compromise. Wow. Like, my integrity, I don't. It, you can't put a dollar value on that. Because at the end of the day, I'm a man and I'm gonna stand tall. Right. It's only. It's only one. Show me. A, show me a bum bed casket, and I have a different opinion. But it's only room for one person in that casket, man. A bunk you bed know, casket. Uh, wow. You gotta That's, willing, real. That's you gotta real. be willing to make certain, certain sacrifices. Dave Chappelle made that sacrifice. A lot of people can't do that because they lust for money. Yeah. Right. 
You and know, when I was so. trying to say it's not deep, it wasn't to try to make it seem like you ain't know what you were saying, but I just want people to know it is what you see. Right. You can't yeah. have that. That's basically what the government will tell you if Suge Knight, Irv Gotti, Jay Prince try to get a distribution company. They're going to come in and say, you can't have that. Right. We're this gonna, is our shit. Right. If you want to make money, you're going to have to go through us. It's called programming for a reason. We're <laughs> in control of programming what you think. Look at it this way. The world, all over the world, we interface through sociological ideas, constructs, right? A man is supposed to behave like this. A woman is supposed to behave like that. We interface through stereotypes all over the world. And those stereotypes are reinforced by the media, movies, music, everything, books, everything. So if they allow us to have control of the distribution, that means we control the content and the delivery of that content, which means we control the minds of the consumers. We they offset, would never give us that. We offset right. their so we programming. Can, we can distribute exactly. on the underground network. We don't have to bring... Every, see, that's I think that's one thing where we always drop the ball. Man. We got to advertise everything. And we we can take the underground railroad approach. You can distribute on the underground level. And they're going to blow that motherfucking underground railroad up. <laughs> Ask Harriet Tubman about that shit. She was charging niggas' you know, dick to get through the, the, get approach, through the man, tunnel with her. You know, awful it's numbers, man. <laughs> Fred Hamilton said that long time ago, man. It's strength in numbers. We don't understand our power. It's strength in numbers, wow. but, man. We so disenfranchised. It's a lot of work to do, man. But I think with platforms like this, man, we got a lot going. One more thing, man. Corey, why you and Zoe ain't run for president, man? You're his president. Zoe is the vice president. Uh, I'll take the VP. The <laughs> Shit. The and uh, Poe is as, as, as the first lady. <laughs> yeah, right. Poe right. is as the first lady. Them yeah. Gonna have, they ain't finna be after me if I was president. I know they'll come get my motherfucking ass. Right, man, right, boy. right, right. But anyway, that was a good right, call, keep, brother. Keep, Thanks keep, for the call. Keep spreading the word, man. All right, All right. brother. Appreciate Much the call, respect, man. man. All right. Yeah, yeah, man. It's like, well, even though you tell people about stuff that's going on, Mm -hmm. They still reject it because they don't want to be taken out of the Matrix. They love Hot Pockets. That movie, The Matrix, is so <laughs> deep. By the way, I want everybody to know a black woman wrote that movie and yeah. they stole it. They stole her script. The Matrix and um, uh, uh, what is the one Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, 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 Terminator. She was Terminator. on my show talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, she that, was that, that Sophia. That movie was so deep when she said there are people who will know What's going on? But don't want to be taken out of the power mm -hmm. plant. They mm -hmm. want to. They want to be living in imaginary world. Well, absolutely, <laughs> you know ignorance I mean? is bliss. Yeah. And what is the root word of ignorant? What? Is ignore. Yeah. That's a conscious act. Yeah. I'd rather be stupid. Stupid means I just don't know. They just want to. Live. Ignorant means I choose to ignore what I know to be true. I'd, I wouldn't want to be ignorant. Do that means I'm that choosing there, consciously. Do you think that there are a lot of people like? more than half that would prefer to ignore? Absolutely. Yeah. Because with knowledge comes responsibility. Now yeah. I got to do something with what I know. And when I didn't know, I could always claim the victim. I don't know. I didn't know. Right. But if a black man goes to court and says, I didn't know, what is the judge going to tell him? Ignorance is no excuse of the law. Right. You should know as a citizen. Now I'm sending your ass to jail. So listen. That's what I would want to say to the brother who called in when he says what we need to do, what we whoop de woo. No, it's not that simple because there are people who don't want their mind freed. Right. Right. And as you said, it's more than half. Right. They don't want to know what we could do. They want to just go to work and go get drunk on the weekend and get back right to go to work <laughs> for the rest of the week. I, hey, most people would rather live a comfortable illusion than an uncomfortable reality. Yeah. It's most, really that simple. Most people will not tell their wife when she asks, how do I look in this dress? <laughs> Bitch, you fucking your life up. That's awful. <laughs> it's awful. You need some Islamic getaway you built. <laughs> most men won't say that. <laughs> but I will. <laughs> Bitch, don't embarrass me walking down the street like that. Goddamn. You need some Islamic gear the yeah, way you cover everything. <laughs> don't let them see nothing but your eyeball. <laughs> Only reason they can see your eyeball because you got to walk. I ain't finna kill your mother. <laughs> you need to see where you going. <laughs> right. if, if it was a way to get you around where you couldn't see. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I just cover it. Throw you in a right. bag. <laughs>
How you walking like them niggas in Django? Everybody riding horses and you walking. <laughs> With the chains. <laughs> Call us right now, 323-965-1600. We got calls. God damn. Come on, get them on. What's up? Hey, <laughs> check it out. You old 5150. Let's hit. Oh, my goodness. Yo, what's good, Corey? It's Jason from New York, man. What it do, man? You all right? I'm doing all right, brother. How you doing, Zoe? Hey, what's happening, big homie? Yeah. So, just to, uh, listen to everything you're saying. I mean, you know, Corey has a very abrasive way of saying the truth but i mean i'm feeling most of it i mean the only only other idea i would throw out there is just that while you know it would be helpful to maybe put out more truth and more sort of real life things i mean the other thing you got to think about even in the case of bet is with putting those things out there be marketable i mean even if you take like rap for example i mean you think about all the the positive or you know rappers that have actual substance to say aren't the ones making money Versus, you know, the most extreme case being Soldier Boy, who was a guy that didn't talk about anything, that made this silly ass dance, that got millions of hits on YouTube, and is basically known just for putting some silly ass dance out there. Or somebody like Two Chains, who's out rapping about absolutely nothing. And his most recent thing is talking about, you know, all he wants for his birthday is a bitch with a big ass. And it's just like, you know, it's silly. Uh, people are interested in those things. So, wow. I mean, where do we sort of find that? that medium where you know the truth or something positive is actually profitable too well you know he said something very interesting what what you fail to realize is movies music these things have energy in them there's a feeling connected to them too it's not just the content. If, if you just presented the content, like, like you said earlier, any man with pride who read the Django script without all the special effects and out, without all the acting and the passion, you know, in, in this, just read the words. You go, hey, this is some act. No, no. But if you put music, if you put beats behind ignorance, like Modi, he said, man, Modi, you know, cool Mo's a cold piece of work. Modi said, man, One of my idols. he said the whole hip-hop music changed. He said, I have no disrespect for the West Coast artists. He said, but here I am in New York in the 90s listening to The Chronic. And he said, I'm sitting there and I'm angry, but I'm bobbing my head. He said, that music was like soul food on wax. Like soul food tastes good. It sounded great, but I knew it wasn't good for us. Just like soul food isn't good for us. And that's really deep. Because and, and that's what he said about it. And that's what took that. You got to look. We planted that seed and now the South took it. And it's just as ignorant as it could go. A now. direct response to what this brother said about, you know, what we're listening to. Mm hmm. It, it's a scene in the movie Malcolm X where the, where, 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 um, the um, dude, um, who was the... Malcolm X was talking to the almighty Elijah, Elijah Muhammad. Yes. And he showed that dirty water. He said, if you give this to the people, they, they will drink, drink it. it. They will drink it. <laughs> they will drink. <laughs> the same stuff, the <laughs> ignorant shit that's behind a beat, like you said. Yeah. They could put the positive shit right. behind a beat. Right. And... You would bounce to that, and too. that energy would change. It, it would, would change. change. It, right. That shit you said, Modi said about uh, it's just like so so soul food, food. On wax. Yeah, shit tastes good, but you know it ain't good for you. Yeah, they know that. Right. They want you to taste that shit that ain't good for you. If this was a society that was about advancement for the people that was watching BET, Soldier Boy would never have. Made he would it. never. He would have never made a dime. Wow. But they, they want went. him rich. They was like, that's the guy. That's him. <laughs> hey, get Soldier Boy on there. So <laughs> Superman can, that hoe. We can write. Huh? And fuck up this entire nation. <laughs> Nut on the back and then lay a sheet over it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a million catch, dollar break. Catch tax that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's what's up, man. Hey, 5150, we are here to answer your question. We are here to respond to what you have to say. This is Corey Holcomb. Who did? Hello. 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 Go ahead, brother. 
Hey, man, a happy new year to you brothers, man. You got a great show going tonight. Bobby. That already. is Bobby. Man. That and, is uh, Bobby. You can't hide your voice, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm what not up, Bobby? hiding my voice, man. Happy new year to you brothers, man. This Again, motherfucker won't show. come up here and face nobody. He'll call on the motherfucking radio. <laughs> <laughs> but look, man, I'm going to always be a follower. You know that. But anyway, a couple of points I wanted to make with respect to this Django uh uh, as you put it, uh, fiasco, debacle, whatever. Simply, I want to say, first of all, uh, it's interesting that everybody got nominated for a Golden Globe except uh, the Negroes in the production. And then the NAACP had the nerve to acknowledge this piece of trash with full image awards, which is just mind-boggling to me. But mm-hmm. then again, it shouldn't be because chicken dinners need table soul. And uh, it's really a, a, a interesting subject you guys are dealing with tonight because we do have to move past allowing this kind of stuff to happen without there being a redress because this is really sickening that they would take our culture and our history and make a mockery out of it at a time when we're still dealing with the slave mentality. Hmm. Hey, so why do you think the NAACP gave props to this movie? Because they need to sell dinner. They want Tarantino to buy about five tables. They want the uh, production company to buy about five tables. Right. Man, they got to sell some tables because otherwise they don't have any income coming in. Wow. And they are willing to sell our soul to do that because this is... I'm going to tell you something about a movie, man. When they made Birth of a Nation at the turn of the century, that spawned the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan. Mm-hmm. It removed all black people from Congress for almost 100 years. So when people say images are not important... They're not telling the truth. They're wow. very important. Wow. Wow. Yeah, they um, they, they basically are, um, how can I put this? I'll put it like this. The majority of people would rather be pets of the, uh, what was that movie, The Vampire? That dude said, I'd rather be one of their pets than their food. Wow. <laughs> that's how no, people that's true. think. That's true. I just want to live. Long as they ain't preying on me. I'm good. I'd rather die for nothing later on than die for something right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what it is. Wow. I mean, this well, is real. And see, you know, this all that gratuitous violence and then having the people get ate up by dogs. I mean, I've never seen a movie that... I don't go to a lot of that Chainsaw Massacre kind of nonsense. No way. But I've never seen a movie in my life where they had folk getting ate up and just blew across the room and it wasn't tied to anything. And then I said, this was a setup, man. Now, Jamie switched uh, managers thinking that they were going to elevate his career. He's going to play suck and fill to DiCaprio as long as he's in the same management group as he is. He can forget about getting where he think he's going to go. And at the, at the expense of, of, of all the people who appreciate his work because he has done some great work, this ain't one of them. This ain't even close. And I think it's going to be a setback to his career at the end because it'll show that he'll he'll do anything, as opposed to turning some stuff down just on the on the fact that it's the wrong thing to do. Bobby Glanton, real men don't play. Hey, and you I, know what? Jamie Foxx is going to work because he is plugged now into with the, the matrix. People yeah, he who make the work. They, yeah, they make movies. Right. He's he, play, He's on the high end now. He could be the next Samuel Jackson in every fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a price to be paid for that because you have trouble looking your people it's in the face, man. Cancer. You'll never be proud of your work. You'll never <laughs> be able to say that I have evolved as a craftsman. And I know that money means a lot to all of us, but it's some things that aren't worth it. And in this instance, the damage that this movie will do to our psychic and our culture is off the chain and off the chart. What did you That's say it's really called? Cool. What is it called, Corey? I, I ain't even going there. That's for the classic. People God. heard it. People Jesus. Heard it. I ain't even going there. Hey, thanks, Bobby, man. We okay. miss you, brother. Happy New Year, man. Yeah, Bobby. All right, you got to take care, man. All right, motherfucker. Bring your ass back up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, later. Man. All right, you got me. Bobby motherfucker, old prideful ass country boy. I ain't hey. coming. I'm a call. <laughs> motherfucker will call. Get up here, shit. <laughs> anyway, we gonna get these callers in because we, you know, time fly up when it's the end. Um, this is the fifty one fifty show. You have been chosen to speak your mind. Get on it. Who this? Hey, what's up? This is what's going on from Tampa. What's up with you, man? Man, hey, I, I'm glad to come in behind Bobby. Are you talking sure. through Don uh, Vader's mask? What the fuck is that noise? <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, okay, now uh, he's back. He's right. Shit. Go ahead. 
Okay, what about now? That's better. Is what? that better? Yeah, go ahead. You off the dark okay. side. Okay, hey, I was, I was saying I was glad I came in behind Bobby. But hey, I want to say this. You know, everybody in Hollywood, basically America, is bought. There's no price too high. And another thing I want to ask y'all, I'm surprised y'all not talking about what Cat Williams said about Jamie Foxx. That's what I want to hear. Well, you know what? Well, is this would... a dog pile on Jamie Foxx? What are we doing? Well, this is what I want to say about that whole thing. Uh, what Cat Williams said about Jamie Foxx, that's Cat Williams. See, by me knowing both of these guys, I don't want to say nothing but my opinion. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I don't want to cause no This shit. nigga s- snuck the call in anyway. Yeah, he hit me on Facebook right. with the question. He yeah. ain't slick. Yeah, I'm right. Y'all you all right. Holla at my boy Tone. Who is this? Who, 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 oh, who? damn. Poetess is... Poetess, cut the man off. She said, holla at thing. my boy Tone. I was going to talk to the man. Who that, was that? Somebody who hit me on Facebook said, ask Corey about what Kat said. But, I, you know. Yeah, I just he can't just speak on... I, I, I can't speak on Kat because Kat is his own man. And mm. I will say this about Kat Williams. Kat Williams didn't just start acting like this. Mm. Cat Williams been the same motherfucker ever he ain't since changed. I've known him. <laughs> so when motherfuckers be like, Cat tripping now, I be like, motherfucker, Cat always been that nigga right there. If he don't like you, that's he what it is. He's just going to tell you, motherfucker, I don't like your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Cat Williams is going to do. If he don't fuck with you, you going to know he don't fuck with you. And this, I don't know. I, I'm not bashing um, Jamie Foxx if it sounded that way. I think Jamie Foxx is a, a brilliant actor. Um, I do. I do. Uh, I'm talking about that movie. I, I just don't condone that type of shit. But I know the hustle out here. Right. You got to do what you got to do. That, that's the best way I can make it sound. You got to do what you got to do. God damn it. I'm, you might see me doing a movie where I'm um, sleeping with um, some big, fat, um, Caucasian woman. Well, didn't you do a movie where you... Oh, no. no I no. did a movie one time where I was Nigga Brown. <laughs> the name of the movie was called A Watermelon Heist. Oh, no. <laughs> what type of <laughs> coonchainery coon is this? You, it's it's, it's, it's Coonery. I was. I, I, I had. I hadn't been in L.A. too long. Uh huh. And the brother who played the father on Good Times. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He walked up to me after I got on stage. He said, "I want you to be in this movie." And you know, I'm green to this shit. I'm like, okay, what I got to do? He said, "Come to this thing." I didn't know we was going to a table read, and we were shooting in two days. Wow! I was like, what? We just that quick? You got right. you stealing watermelons? <laughs> just and, that quick. And it was like it wasn't the type of movie where we was fighting white people, but it was a type of movie where we were doing real nigga stereotypical type of shit. Like wow! We were. It was supposed to be as bad as we can make it. Wow! And after I did it, um, I guess I felt like it was easier to pull off than being around Caucasian people talking crazy to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. We were we were the bad guys. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's just doing a movie like, I imagine being on the set of Roots when they say, cut, and that was great. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, this motherfucker just stomped on me. What the fuck was great about that? That was the scene. I will beat your ass with this motherfucker. <laughs> uh, Nick Nolte, wasn't he in Roots? <laughs> I don't know if that was... Was that Nick Nolte? I don't know. All the motherfuckers. <laughs> but I seen that motherfucker, Lamar Burton, mm. at the airport, and he still looked like he fucked up behind me. <laughs> Come on. He's all right. I saw that brother at the airport, and he was with this white man, too. And I just... You know, I ain't say shit on purpose. I was just watching him. I was like, that motherfucker... He opened his mouth, and he sound... He had that Caucasian talk. Damn, you, you mean I mean? Kunta Kente ain't real? Yeah, he wasn't saying Grinch Dummy. That motherfucker was like, all right, pal, I see you later. I was like, oh, yeah, that root shit still got him fucked up. Come on, man. He got the fine hustle out here. He got the hope he hit another lick. They ain't he- got no more Star Trek movie where they can put some, <laughs> some fucked up eyes in his head or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his TV debuts is a motherfucker. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, what they gonna come up next with for this brother? This motherfucker got his ass whooped all week in the miniseries Roots. <laughs> now he on Star Trek with some bullshit in his eyes. 
What is they gonna have next for the brother? <laughs> what about the good work he's done, like reading Rainbow for the kids? Man, the best shit he ever did was play the next cameo video as the oh, uh, police. Oh, that, wasn't him. <laughs> that wasn't him. That wasn't him. That was him in that cameo video. What are you talking about? The name of the video is Word Up. Oh my God! You <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there talking shit about actors in Hollywood. If I ever, if I ever do a suck ass role, they gonna be playing this shit. They back. gonna go nah, in. Motherfucker. <laughs> I stand up on TV and be like, motherfucker, I was out here fucked up. I had to be Chicken George too. <laughs> oh, we have a girl. Oh, caller. okay. All right. All right. Get the tone right. The first female caller of 2013 on the 5150 show. Who are we talking to? Hi, this is Lisa, and I was calling, um, I had a few comments. One, um, T.J. Holmes, I don't know if you're familiar, but he was on T CNN, mm -hmm. and they gave him a show on BET, mm -hmm. initially coming on five days a week for 30 minutes. They cut it back to one day a week, and I know now he's not even scheduled to come on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Also, Corey mentioned um, about Shawnee that she doesn't date um, men who don't have money, but the guy she's with now doesn't have any. And thirdly, uh -oh. um, we got a reporter. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Zizo, you scared her from talking? She about gone. It. She's she's just having a bad connection. She's with us. Hello. Okay, I'm at. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. she. I told you, she with us. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, she's there. Are you still there, caller? Somebody must be coaching her. Is she there? She's there. Come on, you can finish. This is how you get black women to speak. Hey, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she must really be off. Yeah, she off now. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> if you want a black woman to say something, you be like, "Hey, bitch, fuck you!" Oh, right, bitch. Oh, right, bitch. That's how you break the ice. Oh God, three two three nine six five sixteen. <laughs> Call right is there. dating a broke motherfucker. I guess she can date a broke motherfucker. Do you? Money. Come on, she dating him for dick. Somebody digging her down. Well, when you got when when you got money, I was about you, to say something horrible. <laughs> you dating a broke motherfucker is for dick. Like my sister, she mowed this motherfucker in. He ain't shit. He do the shit. He stand outside with the Statue of Liberty outfit for some little insurance company. It be hot as hell. You ever seen them people out there spinning their sign and shit? Okay, you with this motherfucker? You with the, the stand outside Statue of Liberty spin the side, nigga? Oh my god! You I wonder. Let me ask you this, Corey. Do women? And well, do the friends of women who date men, right? I wonder how those friends judge the girl who's dating the man who doesn't have the job, who doesn't have the money. I wonder how they critique them. I bet you they on that girl's head tough. If you are broke and you get a lot of pussy or women, you're in demand. <laughs> Here we go. That means you have a ponytail. Uh, it's something about you that they want to recreate, procreate. Oh, shit. I get pregnant by him, even though he broke my he baby. He broke, but the baby be my cute. Ba right, my baby will look the way I want my baby to look. I want wow. to break the cycle of how I look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not proud of myself. So I'm a date. I'm about to go wash this homeless motherfucker up. Cause he got and jump on this dick till it skeet up in me. Cause he got Cause a my mama ain't know what she was doing. My mama and God made me imperfect as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> God, this is how I want it to look. Oh, damn. <laughs> I got a cute baby. This is how I want it to look. Right. <laughs> you going to take that? <laughs> the girl I went on prom with. Oh, shit. I always knew she hated herself. Back when mm. we was young, like she was dark, mm -hmm. but she had a real voluptuous body. I thought. She I was bet a, she was pretty. Huh? I thought she was a very pretty girl, but I could tell she hated the way she looked. Mm -hmm. Her dad was this African guy, and right. she used to say, "That's not my real dad." And Ooh. then I found out that is her real dad, mm -hmm. and that's when I really was like, I kind of lost respect for her. So I seen her later on in life, and she got three kids by this Caucasian man who runs wow. in and out of jail. 
And I didn't know them was her kids because her kids came out like white looking. Because that's how she molded them in the womb. Because women had that kind of power. This bitch was drinking Ambi while she was (laughs) pregnant. (laughs) Drinking Ambi. Right. (laughs) Instead of putting it on her skin, she was drinking that shit. Wow. The kids were swimming in Ambi and Kool Aid. <laughs> Instead of amniotic fluid, it was Ambi. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. These are true stories. God of, damn. True stories of shame on the 5150 show. Well, Corey, how do we get out of the tailspin, man? What do you mean? Like, it, all of this terrible stuff we're outlining. The callers are back crazy. But how do we how do we get out of the tailspin? Maybe the callers can help us. We can get out of it by talking about it. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Laughing about it. Yeah. You, if, if, when you don't say nothing, that's the worst thing. Right. Owning up to it. Owning our responsibility in yeah. it. Yeah. Because girls will say something to you. Yes. Shit. Don't get naked. It ain't nothing now. And they be like, what you gonna do with that little motherfucker? <laughs> You better call one of your homeboys over here. You better finish your work. Right. <laughs> you gotta be honest with your wow. girl. You be like, bitch, wow. why you get your face pulled back backwards like that? That plastic surgery shit. I always gag on the plastic face. <laughs> Let me throw a quarter at your jaw, bitch. You tell me do you feel it? Anyway, call her. Go ahead. Man. What you is going? <laughs> hey, what's up, man? I'm I'm on the line. Yes. Yeah. yeah go ahead, brother. Hey, what's up? Happy New Year, Core, man. What's up, Zoe? What's happening, man? Happy New Year, brother. What's up, man? Uh, yo, I've been fucking with you for a while, Core. You pretty much raised me on the perspective relationships, man. Real talk. That's what's up, man. I feel like my work is getting done. <laughs> uh, man, don't ever sell out, man. I don't care if they give you a $10 million contract and say, Corey, want you to do a flip. I come after you, bro. Don't, don't sell out. <laughs> He's not come after you. I don't blame you, dude. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> Like you were saying about um, you dating a girlfriend that was dark skin, whatever. Like how I see it, like dark skinned women, black dark skinned women have it the hardest in this world. Go deep. Why do you think they have it that hard, dark skinned women? Well, specifically black dark skinned women. And the reason why I say they have it the hardest is because we all know the white man runs the world. And under him, you know, I would probably say would maybe be the black man. And then under that would be would probably be the white woman, and then the black dark skinned woman. Because as a woman, you're going to be tried sexually in, in, in the workforce throughout your career. And I, I kind of I, I can kind of buy some of that. I think he's talking about classism, but uh, you know I can kind of buy some of that. But I don't know about the hierarchy he created. I'm yeah, not quite sure. But because black man is last. Well, yeah, yeah. well, some would argue that the black woman is last. No, the black woman is right up under the white man because he <laughs> give her her little nooks and crannies so she'll turn on him. Like we Willie said, Lynch, she like, yes. she like um, Samuel Jackson in that movie. She mm-hmm. right up under him. The baddest dime in the movie. Put that nigga on that horse. <laughs> <laughs> It's unfortunate, man. That's this is where we live nowadays. Wait, we got more. You want to get to the next ones? You got to. You well, got to you know, get. Yeah, them. we got to do some speed um, calling. Thanks for the call, brother. We gonna get everybody in. You got one minute to make your point, so we can get as many people in before the um, porters kick us about this little pussy ass play. All right, <laughs> go ahead, caller. Hit it. Um, hey, Corey, I got a girlfriend, and um, that bitch ain't shit. What's up? <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you. Go ahead. <laughs> um, hey, I got a girlfriend. I just broke up with her, man. I don't trying to find out how do I get over her. Pussy, pussy is the best way to get over pussy. The I moment. can't even lie. Laying up under, laying up under pussy, it's still gonna hurt because you're gonna be thinking about somebody dog walking your bitch pussy. But as long as you in <laughs> pussy, it'll help you out, brother. I hope you get I through this. I can't that even shit, lie. Man. We that's the truth, right? Can't even lie. That's what Mo D had been telling me. It doesn't. It doesn't help. It just hides the pain for a minute. Cause you're skeeting and so, releasing. But as soon as you nuts, you be like, well, "My girl, and I don't want that. <laughs> Who fucking her?" <laughs> 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 no, I. I would. I would suggest that the brother don't fuck, because I think hide and masking it is really gonna prolong it. It's gonna stay longer. I think you just take some time to yourself, get it out your system, do whatever you need to do, think about it, go over what you could have did, resolve that shit in your spirit, 
and then start over. But if you jump right into some new shit, that's a bullshit. I'm just saying you're gonna complicate some things. I'm telling you. I'm t- I, I'm that's just, for people who get to caring about people easily. God damn it! But it's people out here like me who can just fuck for years. And not give a fuck about you. <laughs> you think I give a fuck because I've been fucking you for 12 years? You've just been available for 12 years. It means bitch. absolutely nothing. I don't feel you like that. Bitch, take your care. <laughs> See how I leave the rag on the floor when I leave your house? I don't so, give a fuck so about you. So some this. women, to you, to you, Corey, are actually come receptacles. <laughs> they here to be skeeted on That's basically what Wow so We got the next call on I hope we gave that brother Some good advice Go I ahead. don't know Go ahead caller Jeez yeah, hey, What up This is Steve man What's up brother Steve Hey hey man You know what Corey don't do a fuck But I'm gonna tell you Who else I'm never gonna sell out That nigga James Hanna People sleep James on James Hanna That little motherfucker Don't take no shit though Nah he don't No, nah, James is cold blooded dude He really is you know, I, I well, seen I, that I, nigga go in on Tyler Perry one time for about 30 minutes at a show. Yeah. Because Tyler Perry fired him or some shit. And he was like, fuck Tyler Perry. Motherfucker, when he angry, that motherfucker off the chain. No, nah, James is cold blooded. He should be coming on the Zoe show real soon. One we, thing I will say, he used to work for Tyler Perry. So when you get fired and then you talk shit about somebody, that's a red flag, in my opinion. That's what, do you what mean? I want to say. Point, as long as they pay, you're right. right. He talked shit about Tyler Perry when Tyler Perry stopped fucking with him, but he was working for Tyler Perry. And if you know anything about this world, when people through with you, how they really feel about you, that's when they come out with it. When they through with your motherfucking ass. So, red flag that nigga. Well, I know that nigga, James. Mad, that's when they really let you know how they feel. You right wow. Now. That's a good point. That's real talk <laughs> right there. Fl- I, let me tell you something. I'm bold enough to say this shit. I am not mad at James Hanna. But when I first started doing comedy, James Hanna was one of the OGs who worked at the comedy club. Mm-hmm. And that motherfucker made it hard for me to go on stage. Why? Competition. Man, he was Brother Baines. Everybody needs to learn the word <laughs> competition. Competition is a motherfucking word that explains a lot of shit that's going on in your life right well, now. Well, it explains America. Right. American culture is competitive. Competition. If Period. you're a cute bitch and then some more cute bitches come in there, all of a sudden, bitch, your, your, your value has shot down a little bit. Do you think if you walk in a club with a super bad babe, that other bad babes want to get at you just to show the bad babe you got on your arm up. Right. But this hmm. is California. When you come in the club with a bad bitch, mm-hmm. bad bitch is going to try to eat your bad bitch pussy. Ooh. <laughs> this is California. These hoes be coming at your bitch when you leave. What you with that bust ass nigga for? Girl, I can do this for you. Right. This is California. All these hoes he puts out here. <laughs> and I like that. The only thing I don't like about it, they won't admit they eat pussy. And then you've been with the bitch for five years. You man, we ain't never ate no pussy together. <laughs> that ain't fair. That should, that should be a felony. If you eat pussy and don't disclose that to your man. Wow. That is some selfish shit right wow. there. Wow. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. You want to take one more, man. Jesus. You Do we got time to take one more party? Yeah. We got we got time. One more. Come on, caller. Get it in. <sighs> Go okay, ahead. Well, get it in. Yeah. Caller. Get it in. Get it in. Hey, um, you know, I just barely got a chance to tune in. I missed half the show. Did y'all already speak on Rob Parker? Rob Parker, what'd he do? Uh it was similar to what you were saying on on ESPN, how the motherfuckers don't speak their they mind. And he did, got suspended for RG3. 30 days. Now they're not renewing his contract. Right, right. Rob Parker is one of the guys who goes on first take sometimes. And what he did... He called he, him corny, right? Well, he spoke on RG's three, uh, RG3 realness as a black man because he's married to a white woman, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Rob Parker was uh, egged on to do that by the producers. And it backfired on him, and he is the scapegoat. The, the for fall that. guy for it, yeah. yeah he's a, he, you know, that, and it's like, I, I like the way Stephen A. Smith basically played that shit off. Like, hey, I'm uncomfortable with what y'all talking about right now. Wow. <laughs> hey, that was real. I'm going to be real with you. Until Rob Parker did that shit, I was questioning him. <laughs> right, wow. Yeah. But yeah. let me ask this. But that, he's, he's a utility guy, because the reason you question him is because of things you saw him do, brother. Yeah, right. he, he, man, I was... 
even to the point sometimes, shit, I was agreeing with Skip over that nigga. Right. right. Well, and let me ask you this. Why did the dude call RG3 corny in the be- in the first place? What was his cause for calling him that? I, I mean, from what he was saying, it was, I don't know. Maybe because, you know. But haven't you seen I, RG3 do some corny shit? I mean, I, I just see the guy, you know, the kid I mean, play I, football and I, I, do it I, well. I judge niggas by the region they come from. I mean, you from you from the shy. I'm from Compton. You oh, know what okay. I mean? We, we might bang different, but we come from the same shit. Right. That nigga, you know, I'm not gonna wear that shit. I know you ain't gonna wear that shit. You know, he do corny shit, then you know he do corny he shit. He a military. I, mean, I can't really say much about that, but you know, I, niggas that smile a lot kind of rub me the wrong way. What? But is corny? I mean, is corny offensive? Calling the dude corny? It's not like calling him a nigga. Well, I, mean, I don't get it. Him a, he called him a Republican, saying that, you know, he has a white woman. To me, he didn't really say nothing more. Ah, that's nothing the that key. Bad. That's the key. He said he had a white woman? Did he say a white woman? Yeah, he had a white woman. Oh, well, then there it is. There, that's what happened. Because he, he married to a white woman. Well, then RG3 that's what happened. is trying to fit into society as um, an elite black man. And right. not trying to fit into society as a black man. And that is corny to me. Okay. Even though I love him, I rooted for him. I wanted them to win yeah. so bad. But shit he's done makes me feel like he's lost. Wow. Right. Shit uh, he's yeah. done. Well, well, we might say, have to do a show on uh, that. I don't know if you spoke on this either. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm happy you about to do a show out here for us and shit. I'll be in Ontario next Sunday. Hopefully you closing and shit. They ain't going to let me close that shit. Them motherfuckers politic they way on the list. See, I never declare myself as the headliner of the show. Mm-hmm. I should be the headliner of the show because everybody know they're going to be like, well, why the fuck Corey ain't headlining? Right. But that's that's just how that show going to go. That's some Man, nigga I, shit. I've been promoting this motherfucker for you. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's a lot of niggas out here who they take, my, you know, I talk a lot of crazy shit. But, you know, so I'm telling niggas, come see this nigga Corey so y'all can really hear some shit. I hope now, motherfuckers do come hey, see it. I ain't trying to cut you off, but we got to wrap the show. And I hope you call back next yeah, week, brother. We should do um, this topic on the Cordy sports figures who we, date white women. Yeah, we'll do this shit on, <laughs> on black people trying to, to to get into the world as elite black men Ooh, instead of black men. That's all right, the topic. All right. But, yeah, we got to wrap it up. This was the first show of 2013. Portis, um, thanks for having us. Zoe, thanks for come coming. Man, anytime, brother. We... We do this 5150 show, and I, I want to let you know that if you fuck a fat girl the day you meet her, that's like finding a $20 bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right.